Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we're going to be discussing and as the title talks about wildly speculating in a way that is probably not healthy or smart about what we might see in the brand new Pokemon game Legends Arceus that is due to come out at the beginning of next year. Let's discuss it. So back around two weeks ago at the Pokemon Presents event near Pokemon's 25th anniversary, we got the announcement of two different games. We got the announcement of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, faithful remakes of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl that came out for the Nintendo DS, and we also got Legends Arceus. Now for those of you who do not know, Legends Arceus is a game that is being developed by Game Freak as opposed to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, which are being developed by a separate developer, which is noteworthy. And we're gonna be discussing those remakes in future videos as well. But for today's video, we're gonna be talking about Legends Arceus, which you're seeing footage of in the background. And as you are all keenly aware, is Game Freak's first real venture into an open world Pokemon game. It's a spin-off of sorts, even though it is a mainline game. It is a fully single player adventure where in which you are the player character in an ancient time of the Sinnoh region, where the region does not look as it does in the original games. And you are basically going out into the world to craft the first Pokedex. That is pretty much the bulk of what we know about the story up to this point. And we also know that the legendary Pokemon Arceus, the creator of the universe as we know it, is the box legendary and is the key to this story. So what can we expect from this game? Well, there's a lot of things that have been floating through my mind as we watch the trailer and as we've kind of been digesting over the last couple weeks. And the first thing that comes to mind is, I think we're gonna see Pokemon in the Sinnoh region that are not inherently native there. As we've already seen with the starters for this game, Rowlet, Oshawott, and Cyndaquil, which are starters from three different regions, they still fit the fire, water, grass trio, but it's very different for Sinnoh. In the game trailer and in the website, uh, on Pokemon's website, it talks about how a certain professor who we don't know about yet brought these Pokemon from their home regions to the Sinnoh region. How that all plays into the story, we're not sure, but I think it's giving us a sign that we're gonna have access to a Pokedex that isn't identical to what we know of native Sinnoh in Diamond and Pearl. If I had to guess, I think we're going to see some Pokemon from other regions make it into this decks that aren't regularly in Sinnoh. The Pokedex in the Sinnoh games is something that fans usually criticize. In Diamond and Pearl especially, there was a severe lacking in certain types. There are only five starter, there are only five fire families of evolutions you could acquire in Diamond and Pearl. It was fixed a little bit in Platinum, but that number was still very low. There was a lot of balancing issues with the Pokedex, and I think in, 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 in Legends Arceus, Arceus, however you pronounce it, we are going to see an expanded Pokedex. I don't know how much. I wouldn't think it's going to be by very much. And it's still up in the air if this game is even going to have something like Pokemon Home connectivity, where you can bring in or send away Pokemon that you use in your journey. All of that, we're going to find out as the months unfold. The next thing that I think I'm fairly confident of is that this game is going to be running on the rumored Switch Pro. Now, we've seen recently, in, in the past week or so, some more credible reports come out that Nintendo is indeed developing a Pro Switch. The details we know at the moment are that it, at the very least, it has a larger screen in the handheld mode, and there are various reports saying that the internal specs are also going to be upgraded. And with a game as ambitious as Legends Arceus, and a game that, quite frankly, did not seem to be running at its best at multiple times during the first trailer, I have a feeling that this game is going to see far better performance on a Switch Pro. I would be willing to predict right now that a year from now, when we possibly have this game, we're going to see a lot of people complaining that the original Switch version does not run as well as the Switch Pro, and there's going to be a lot of Pokemon fans critical of Game Freak for not optimizing it for the console that most people have. That will happen. Let's just settle on the fact that that's going to happen and move forward because Game Freak can never avoid criticism, whether it's warrant can never avoid not getting criticism, whether it's warranted or not. The next thing that I think we're going to see in this game is I think we're going to see 
an expanded use of what the player himself or herself can do. Now, there's been some leaks for Legends Arceus, which shows that we're going to have more mobility options. Even as we saw in the trailer, you could do a dive roll and try to avoid Pokemon. You could get up close and actually seem to throw the Pokeball at the Pokemon in the open world in a way that we really haven't seen in any game. If I had to liken it to something, I would say it's taking some of the more physical aspects of catching Pokemon in Let's Go and in the mobile game Pokemon Go and incorporating more of that mainline feel to it. And that Pokeball is going to be especially interesting because it's an old Pokeball. This is before the Sylph Company revolutionized the production of Pokeballs in Kanto. This is a time when Pokeballs are more ancient. They're not as refined as they are in the mainline games. So seeing how we get Pokeballs and the discussion of how they're used and what the relation is to Pokemon is going to be interesting. Something that I've seen talked about on social media, which is which I would love to see is the use of Pokemon being in what with with humanity in ways that aren't just with Pokeballs. There's been uh, examples in the movies and in the anime where in ancient times, Pokemon have harnesses and are controlled by trainers and farmers and uh, warriors in ways that aren't just for control with a Pokeball. It's in a different format. I would love to see some ancient ways of people and Pokemon interacting expanding their understanding of the landmass in which they live on, whether it's Pokemon being used in farms or other instances where they're out in the world and they're working with people, but they're not necessarily captured by the trainer. I think a lot of that would work to expand the lore of the world, and it would give us a look into the Pokemon world in a different time period with which we've never really seen before in the games. I think it would be fascinating. I think it would be a good way to kind of build up this world as a very old world. There's been a lot of speculation as to mythicals in this game, and we know Arceus is in it, we know he's the, the cover legendary, we know he is the, the, the story's, um, he is the pinnacle of the story, he is what the story centers around. But are we going to see other mythical Pokemon such as Darkrai? Are we going to see legendary Pokemon like Cresselia? Will the lakes still be where they are on the map, and will we see Azelf, Mesprit, and Uxie? I'm of the opinion that I think we will, and I think they're going to play a role in the story, and I think that Legends Arceus could offer us a really good opportunity to explore the enormity of what a legendary Pokemon is and what a mythical Pokemon is in a way that the core series has not done up to this point. In most of the core games, it's essentially treated as any other encounter. Granted, you have to do some special things, you have to jump through some hoops to get there, but eventually you engage in the battle and then you just chuck your Pokeballs at them and you cross your fingers, hope you don't run out, and if you run out, you reset your game and try again. I think there's a lot that this game could do to give us a ton of story and depth to these mythicals and legendaries that we don't regularly get or that we used to get on a smaller level, but we don't really get any more. And taking a single player game like this to really flesh them out, give them some, some build up and some gravitas in this world, I think would be really cool. The next thing that we're also gonna see is the locations are gonna radically change. And I think they're hiding some things from us. I don't think that the, uh, the settlement that your trainer leaves from in the trailer is the only settlement in the Sinnoh region at this time. I think there's gonna be dotted around the map various other settlements of people that you can come across, learn things from, explore the lore. I don't think that once you leave that main settlement, you're basically traversing a totally, totally open wilderness. I think there's going to be a little bit of structure of towns present, similar to towns like Freezington, little settlements where people are just getting their feet wet in this world. And I think there's going to be side quests. I think you're going to have to basically work with these towns to allow the environment and the Pokemon that live in the wild to work better with these people. You're going to be trying to bridge that gap between people and Pokemon in a way that we read about a little bit in the Canelave Library in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. We know from those books in the library that people and Pokemon were much, were much, much closer in ancient times, and since then they've grown apart and kind of operate in their own spaces. But in Legends Arceus, the humans are the minority in this region, it seems. The Pokemon rule. The wild expanses run rampant. Pokemon and people are just getting to know each other in this region. And I think that it's something that you could really explore through individual smaller side quests, which bring about the world in a, 
in a more uh, fleshed out way than what we usually get from a main campaign. Ultimately, I think it's these little things that are going to really open up the world and allow us to see a lot more opportunity in the future with Pokemon games, even though this is just Game Freak's first start. With that being said, we have, haven't touched on combat. We haven't touched on the fact that it doesn't appear abilities exist in this game. If you look on the website for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, when they list the starters, Chimtar, Turtwig, and Piplup, they list their abilities. But for whatever reason, when you look on the starters for Legends Arceus, there are no abilities. Is there going to be a different system here than what we usually get? Are they going to take this in a new direction and kind of introduce a new system into Pokemon? Who knows? There's so many different things that we're going to speculate on, and we're going to be speculating on a lot of them throughout the next year. And obviously, I want to make more videos like this, so we're not going to touch on every single subject here, but these are just some of my initial thoughts after processing what we saw for about a week or two. I wanted to hold off on making a video because I needed to collect my thoughts, and some of what I mentioned here, these lore-based things, is what interests me most about Legends Arceus. With that being said, I want to hear from you. Are you excited for Legends Arceus, and what do you think we're going to get in this game that's different from the mainline Pokemon games? With that being said, we're going to be back soon with another discussion video focusing on the remakes of the original Sinnoh games and talking about what we can expect from them. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I have been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.